It's no secret that getting a job in Japan isn't always the easiest experience, especially for those with no Japanese language ability or prior industry experience. But what if I told you there's a largely unspoken area of IT in Japan that's growing exponentially that doesn't require any Japanese language ability or prior experience? I've been living and working in Japan for about six years now, with the bulk of that being spent working in IT. Before I got my first IT job in Japan, I was a recent graduate, so I had no prior industry experience, and my Japanese was a really low conversational level. I'm now working remotely in a job that requires no Japanese language ability and I've helped quite a few other people get into jobs within the same field too. Now obviously nothing's going to be as simple as just kind of waltzing into a job with absolutely no preparation but in my opinion this is probably the best way that you can get an IT job in Japan so I will do my best to break down what I think are the best steps to land your first job based on my experience and the experience of others that I've worked with as well. So this will also be specific to a particular kind of job as well so I will do my best to break down all the different aspects of the job, such as the salary expectations and what kind of career progression there is. Well, what's the secret sauce? Two words, data centers, specifically cloud-based data centers. For anyone that doesn't know, cloud computing is basically just providing computing resources over the internet instead of having to own the physical hardware on site. Data centers are effectively the backbone of the cloud and are basically just large facilities that contain all the physical infrastructure that makes up the cloud, such as servers and networking equipment. So the cloud industry is rapidly growing and it's largely monopolized by a few major providers, namely AWS, Google, Microsoft, Oracle and IBM. There are a few other companies that are involved in the cloud, but these are the largest ones. Now you might be thinking that surely there's no way you can work for companies as highly regarded as these, especially without any Japanese language ability or prior industry experience. But I'm here to tell you that you absolutely can. In fact, I have close friends in Japan working in the top five cloud providers, so I have a pretty good understanding of how the work differs and what kind of opportunities are available in each one. So for the last few years, these data center job opportunities have largely been absent from discussion. Now this is likely due to the fact that the cloud industry has only really started to significantly see growth in Japan in recent years. Many still regard English teaching as the best way to get a job in Japan. And while this is still largely true in many aspects, the problem with English teaching is that the dispatch companies usually pay considerably low salaries and sometimes have questionable ethics, which really makes it hard to consider as a long-term career. That's not to say that English teaching is a bad opportunity, especially in the short term, which I will talk about later. The reason that data center jobs are such a good opportunity in Japan right now is for one reason, supply and demand. The data center industry in Japan is growing at an increasingly accelerating rate. AWS recently announced that they would be investing $15 billion just to expand the cloud infrastructure in Japan. Google Cloud recently opened its first Google-owned data center in Japan as part of a $730 million investment in the country. And many of the other large providers are doubling or even tripling in size in 2024 alone just in terms of data centers. So I live relatively close to one of the data center cities in Japan and I'm constantly seeing new data centers being built. So what this means is that there's a growing demand for people to work in these data centers and this is causing these large cloud providers to hire people without much experience at all. And what makes this a unique opportunity in Japan is that there's always a hard requirement for English fluency due to the fact that all the internal systems, internal teams and management all use English. Due to the fact that the general population of Japan Japan ranks relatively low in terms of English fluency. This leaves these positions to be largely filled by foreigners. In fact, in all of the places that I've worked so far, almost all of my colleagues were foreigners. But you might be wondering, what's it actually like to work in a data center in Japan? What kind of career opportunities and salary expectations are there? What's the work-life balance like? So let's talk about it. As a standard data center technician, you're the first level of support within the data center. So this largely means maintaining the day-to-day -day operations of the site that you work at. You'll typically be responsible responsible for maintaining the infrastructure, so troubleshooting and fixing server and networking hardware, replacing faulty components, installing new racks, running cabling, and things of that nature. There are two main types of data center, which is leased and co-location. A leased data center is one that was built and is owned by the cloud provider, whereas a co-location data center is basically a facility whereby a company rents out rack space to multiple cloud providers. So you'll typically be sharing the data center with other companies. In my experience, the lease sites tend to be a little bit better to work at compared to co-location sites. This is typically due to the fact that they are only for the company employees. Some of the larger companies such as Google are known for having gyms and other sports facilities in their data centers. The work that you do largely depends on the company that you work at. So companies, for example, such as AWS, have compartmentalized teams where they have individual teams 
running different parts of the data center. So for example, you have a team installing the RECs, a team maintaining the RECs, a team decommissioning the RECs, and then other teams such as logistics and networking teams. There are also opportunities to work at contracting agencies, whereby you will work directly for an agency that contracts you to work at another company's data centers. So I actually know quite a few people that did go this route and then ended up getting headhunted by the companies that they worked at just due to their high performance. So due to demand being so high, some of these companies are actually offering training programs whereby they will bring on people with absolutely no experience whatsoever and then train them up over a period of about six to 12 months with the expectation that they will convert to full time providing that they do well on the training program. These training programs typically just consist of shadow other technicians in the data center and completing other training curriculums. Other companies that aren't offering similar training programs officially do tend to hire people without much experience with the assumption that they can learn on the job just by shadowing other technicians. I also want to note that some of these larger companies are implementing or have already implemented internal systems whereby technicians are effectively guided through the troubleshooting steps that they need to take, which is another major reason why they are usually happy to bring on people without much prior experience. There's plenty of opportunity to progress or get promoted or change teams or even companies providing that you put the work in. I know plenty of people that have become managers or moved to various different teams such as software development, network engineering or technical project management. I myself ended up moving into global operations in the data center world which is how I landed my current job. When it comes to salary expectations, an entry level data center technician typically makes around four to five million a year, a mid level technician typically makes around five to six million yen a year and a more experienced technician typically makes around seven to 8 million yen a year. However, it can easily go above this when you take into account all the other various bonuses that these jobs tend to pay out. For example, a data center technician who's making around 5 million yen base salary per year can typically end up making anywhere from 6 to 7 million yen a year after bonuses. Additionally, moving into more senior data center related roles can easily lead to salaries of over 12 million yen a year. To put this in perspective, typically the average English teacher will make around 2.5 to 3 million yen per year. So on top of the base salary and bonus you can expect a 401k, all health insurance, and typically around 20 days off a year or more. Also, depending on where you work, you can expect some other company-specific benefits. Now, before I talk about how you might get your first data center job, I want to talk about something that some people might consider a potential drawback. Data center jobs typically are shift-based jobs, which can mean working on the weekends or in some cases, even nights. However, this can massively vary depending on the company that you work at. Generally, companies such as Google, Microsoft, and Oracle tend to be known for not having night shifts. And I do know people that work in data centers that don't have any shifts at all and just follow the standard Monday to Friday, nine to five working pattern. In these cases, they usually are some kind of rotating on-call system. On the other hand, companies such as AWS largely work on a 24 seven shift pattern whereby technicians will work for four days and then have a three day weekend. I should add that depending on where you work, there's usually large bonus payouts for working outside of standard hours, which can typically accumulate up to one to 2 million yen extra per year. Again, this varies a lot, but it's just good to be aware that not all data center jobs require shift work. Also, it's usually just the teams that are responsible for maintaining the server and network and equipment that work shifts. Any other teams that are working in the data centers typically just follow the Monday to Friday pattern. Now, when it comes to landing your first data center job in Japan, the route you take will largely depend on different things such as are you living in Japan already? Do you have any prior industry experience? Do you have an IT related degree or perhaps any certifications? Now, if you don't have any of these things at all, it doesn't rule you out. It just means that you might have to take some extra steps. I also really want to emphasize that not already living in Japan doesn't rule you out either. I do know several people that did get employed directly from overseas. However, if you don't have any of these things already, I would recommend that you either look into maybe taking some certifications, which I'll speak about in a minute, or perhaps try and look into coming to Japan first via another route, whether it's English teaching or perhaps on a working holiday visa, and then look to transition once you're here. The main issue that some of these larger companies have with hiring directly from overseas is the worry that they will spend a lot of time, effort and resources bringing someone all the way to Japan only for them to realize that for whatever reason, they don't like living in Japan and then end up leaving a few months later. Now, perhaps with any job, the most important thing is being proactive and networking. And I can't stress this enough. This might just be the best way that you can find a data center job in Japan. So if you don't have a LinkedIn account already, I highly recommend that you download one and start setting 
job alerts for data center jobs in Japan, and then you'll get emails every day or every week with new job openings. You can also find and connect with people that already work in these positions already, be it technicians, recruiters, or even better yet, hiring managers. Now, I'm not saying to harass anyone, but it pays to be proactive. So reach out to these people, express your interests, and ask for any advice. I know one person who found his first position in a data center just by connecting with people on LinkedIn who were already working in these positions in Japan. He actually ended up getting a referral from one of them, and that's how he landed his first interview. Referrals, I should add, are absolutely massive and will give anyone a significant chance to land an interview so if you know anyone that works in any of these large cloud providers already i highly recommend that you reach out to them and ask for a referral even if they're not living in japan or in a data center related role if not i highly recommend that you try and reach out and make some contacts on linkedin because it really does pay to be proactive also just generally check company websites for openings but bear in mind most of the time the openings on the company websites are also opened on linkedin as well when it comes to certifications they're not strictly necessary especially if you do have a little bit of prior experience but regardless getting them can really help your resume stand out. You don't even have to take the certification exams, just studying the content of the certification can be massively beneficial. However, with that being said, I would say that the most relevant certifications to data center jobs would be CompTIA's A+, and Network+, Plus, which are entry-level certifications in hardware and networking. Basically, any technical questions that you get in the interviews would likely be covered by these certifications. If you want to take things a step further, the CCNA might be a big boost, but bear in mind this is an associate-level networking certification, and it's probably a little bit overkill considering most of the people that I've worked with in the data centers don't even have this certification. A basic entry-level cloud computing certification, such as the AWS Cloud Practitioner's Exam, would probably also give your resume a significant boost. More importantly, though, considering most people don't even know what a data center is, just really conveying on your resume that you have a genuine interest in working in cloud computing will really help you stand out. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, do feel free to leave a like. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. Until next time.